There are roughly $40,000 stores in America. Shoppers love them for bargains. But in recent years, hundreds of people have been injured, some even killed in incidents there. So are dollar stores safe? Shoppers looking for discounts love dollar stores. You can often find brand name items at bargain prices. But popular chains like Dollar General, Family Dollar, and Dollar Tree have also been the location for out of control and sudden acts of violence. Put your hands up. Outside this Dollar General in New Jersey, police opened fire at a disgruntled customer after they say he drew his gun. In Alabama, these two masked men try to rob this family dollar with machetes. They were never caught. Nearly 400 people have been injured and 149 people have been killed at these dollar store chains since 2014. And in the wake of all this violence, these dollar store workers are taking a stand. Why do we have to go and protest? Why do we have to talk to Inside Edition? They need to be accountable. Kenya Slaughter is a former Dollar General assistant manager. People are getting robbed at gunpoint every other day. The stores are unsafe. That's why it's happening. Period. One of those Dollar General clerks robbed at gunpoint was Gabrielle Simmons. 911, where's your emergency? Uh, the Dollar General. Uh, somebody's been shot. Surveillance video shows Gabrielle frantically stuffing the bag with cash before the gunman shoots. A loving mother, a caring friend, an awesome person. She had a heart. She gave up the money and he still shot her. Like no other. She was putting the money in the bag, but the next thing you know, she was shot point blank range and she died right then and there. Simmons' friend Jen Ferron says the dollar stores don't care enough about employees working in dangerous neighborhoods. Corporations like Dollar General. Dangerous neighborhoods. Somebody's Some neighborhoods. Yeah, yeah, but why we got we got we gotta stop saying dangerous neighborhoods. You gotta say the neighborhoods where these motherfuckers live at. I mean, because it's like it makes it seem like the neighborhoods is the boogeyman and shit. Yeah, the neighborhood. Well, yeah, like, 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 if if anybody lived there, it would be there. If if, if you evacuated the neighborhood, it would still be spooky ghosts and shit. Right yeah. <laughs> so, I was watching the video. It didn't look like he stopped and shot. He may have had his finger on the trigger, and when he went yeah, to grab the I bag, agree. he pulled the trigger. I agree. He just I agree with that. I, I agree with that. He um, he 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 was just when well, she dumped the. When she dumped the um whole bag, thing in there, like know. right there, and he, he probably like, oh shit, and he was trying to like to, um gather it, and boom, it went off. But I love the fact that oh, they're showing, they're 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 they're, t they're talking about the Dollar Tree and you know how bargain bargain basement prices, and then they're showing all the Dollar Tree is being robbed. It's like oh gosh, and then the uh, the shooting with a disgruntled customer where police shot him after he allegedly pulled a gun. The gun is on freaking camera. It wasn't allegedly. He pulled the dang gun. Right, exactly. He must have been black. The next thing you know, she was shot point blank range and she died right then and there. Simmons' friend Jen Ferron says the dollar stores don't care enough about employees working in dangerous neighborhoods. Corporations like Dollar General didn't think it was important enough to go ahead and put security in there because corporation didn't think the neighborhood was worth it. Now Kenya and other dollars. Yeah, they blame the corporation for the actions of a fucking one group of people. Only people fucking robbing a dollar store and fucking putting a gun in somebody's face in a fucking dollar store is a fucking sun man. I bet you 99% of these are sun men. Only one that was probably a white guy was the one in Jacksonville where the white guy Wrote that manifesto and went in there and shot all those black people. I think he killed three black people at the Dollar General in Jacksonville last month or two months ago. Um, that's the only time I bet a fucking white guy to fucking discharge the gun in the dollar store. Neighborhood was worth it. Now Kenya and other dollar store workers are asking for better in-store security, better staffing, fair wages, and mental health resources. I know what I signed up for. I signed up to be an associate stalker. I didn't sign up to be no security guard. We would love to be able to have a sit down and just discuss um, the things that we're asking for because we've delivered a list of demands, you know? Again, accountability, prevention, and a time to heal.
Dollar General, Dollar Tree, and Family Dollar all tell us the safety of their employees and customers is their priority, adding they're implementing enhanced security measures. This is Seattle. San Francisco. It says SFP. data shows criminals break into 55 cars every single day in San Francisco, but a new strategy by police is bringing that number down. Good evening. I'm Ama Dates. And I'm Dan Ashley. Thanks for joining us. Here are the latest pictures viewers have sent to the ABC 7 News I team of car burglaries that they spotted or in some cases suffered themselves. SFPD says the number of car break-ins is down 5% from the same time last year. And they credit the use of bait cars. Yeah, and the I-Team Stan Noyes is here with more on the first arrest uh, in this latest bait car campaign. Dan. Well, Dan and Ama, police sources tell me any arrest using the bait car will have a big impact that one criminal typically breaks into several cars in a single day. But you're about to see, even with an arrest, sometimes it's not long before they're back on the street. This couple from Indiana won't be coming back to San Francisco anytime soon. It's just sad. It's sad to see what well, we used to be a beautiful city come to this. Dan and Linda. It's sad. It's sad to see what used to be a beautiful city come to this. What well, we used to be a beautiful city come to this. Dan and Linda Oligus were headed to a wedding in Sonoma County last month, but they stopped to tour Alcatraz prison. And you saw Alcatraz? How was it? It was awesome. Fabulous. We're in a great mood after we there saw you Alcatraz. Go. I mean, that you need was... to open it up again. I was just about to say that. <laughs> open it back up. <laughs> oh, man, that's racist, man. She's she's red-pilled. She like, fuck it. White women don't usually say stuff like that. They know better. Um, <laughs> I flew into San Francisco and was in San Jose a month ago for, for some training. And, uh, yeah, I didn't go out much because I was like, I don't want to get involved in that stuff, but that was the San Francisco airport is actually south of San Francisco, so never went into the city. Mm. The tour boat and walked across the Embarcadero to this parking lot. They thought their luggage would be safe in the rental car, but they joined the 15,357 other people who have had their cars broken into so far this year in San Francisco. They lost cash, a $1,200 iPad, and a $3,500 laptop. Yeah, we never hey. left anything in the car. There was three of us down there, and I said, you're not leaving anything in the car. Nah, you can't do that in San Francisco. That's like their number one lit, doing, going around, looking at people's windows and seeing if they got some shit. The police left a Yo, let's be honest, like, Central Station. They had recovered. Let's, huh? let's be honest, if I was down there and they didn't break into my car, I would be surprised. Yeah. Covered their luggage. But they basically told us that, you know, is there a chance for us getting our computers back? And they said, no, uh, your, your computer will probably end up in either Vietnam or another Asian country. That happened on a Friday. Just three days later, the iPad pinged this location in Vietnam, 8,836 miles away. And that. That's crazy. They're sending them over to Vietnam. At least they're doing. At least they're not just doing this shit for fun. Damn. Well, they're selling it for pennies on the dollar, and then they're shipping it to, to Asia. So how much do you think they sold that $3,500 laptop for? I'd say maybe $300, $400. Oh, yeah, that's a good lift. Dude. That's a hell of a good lift. Country. That happened on a Friday. Just three days later, the iPad pinged this location in Vietnam, 8,836 miles away. And that laptop containing Linda's work as a photographer was long gone. I thought I was going to hyperventilate. He was probably the strong one in this case because I, I, you know, I mean, it was just devastating for me. Police say they caught the man responsible for the Olegas' break in, 26 year old Robert Sanza of San Francisco. The criminal complaint alleges on that day, September 1st, he broke into the couple's rental. That motherfucker looked like an old McFucking statue, man. Goddamn. You don't, you don't think he a tiger? Nah, this is an old burrito, man. Okay, okay, okay. Goddamn old burrito, man. What you talking about? You think it's, you think he's a um you think he's a um a Cambodian or Filipino or some shit? I don't think he's a Filipino, yeah. I don't think so, man. He looked like, but y'all do look the same though. So some and some sometimes, 
sometimes y'all look the same, but I can tell the difference. Um, I say this is a, this is a fucking ass. Wait, is it pragmatism or what? Sansa of San Francisco. Mm, the criminal nah. complaint alleges that, on that day, September 1st, he broke into the couple's rental car, another rental car, and a San Francisco Police Department bait car. They may be breaking into cars that are put out there by the San Francisco Police Department. The police chief announced the new bait car campaign the week before Sansa's arrest. I was there in court last week when he pled not guilty and set a trial date. And I've been researching Sansa's court records in several counties. Over the past five years, Sansa has been arrested more than a dozen times. He has convictions for car burglary, grand theft, hit and run, shoplifting, and more. He was on probation at the time he's accused of breaking into the Olegesis rental car. Robert Sansa has also been accused of evading arrest on several occasions, trying to drive away, but slamming into cars, causing injuries, and putting anyone on those streets in danger. February 2nd of last year, police responded to the Japantown garage for a report of an auto burglary. Officers tried to detain Sansa as the suspect, but he fled, got in his car, ran over an officer's foot, and hit a parked car. Less than three months later, court records show the police tried to arrest him in North Beach. He was driving a stolen vehicle reportedly used in multiple car break-ins that day. The police sort of trapped him. This is a one-way street. He, they trapped him down there. Neighbors watched as Sansa hit the two patrol cars, drove onto the sidewalk, and took out this staircase. And suddenly the whole house starts shaking, and my wife starts yelling, someone just hit your Vespa. His Vespa was destroyed. He had to replace it. The complaint says Sansa hit another patrol car a block away, injuring an officer. Sideswiped another house. He made it to Columbus and Broadway, where he hit a civilian's car, injuring them. He left the car and ran into Chinatown, where officers finally arrested him. At Think about that. All of that, and he just gets charged with whatever he stole. <laughs> like, at the end, of when, once they plea everything down, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you go to court, they plea everything down. It's right. like San Francisco. <laughs> Yo, but, but, hey, but, Ark, but, Ark, that, um, that, that kid, Sanja, whatever his name is, my man's Filipino. He got that same last name. This kid might be Ooh, Filipino. Okay. I'll take Filipino. Then we, well, then that's fine. Well, you know what? I, he, if you're Filipino, he acting like a home braid, though. Yo, uh, God bless the gliders, though. God bless the USA. Yeah, they put up with this shit. Like, this is un this is one of his arrests. He's been arrested 12 times. This is just one of them. And and he and he's on the streets. You guys are on the streets. But but I'm sure this is the one where he stops. Like, I'm sure this is the one. Yeah. Turn life around. Uh. He detained Sansa as the suspect, but he fled, got in his car, ran over an officer's foot, and hit a parked car. Less than three months later, court records show the police tried to arrest him in North Beach. He was driving a stolen vehicle reportedly used in multiple car break-ins that day. The police sort of trapped him. This is a one-way street. He, they trapped him down there. Neighbors watched as Sansa hit the two patrol cars, drove onto the sidewalk, and took out this staircase. And suddenly the whole house starts shaking. And... My wife starts yelling, someone just hit your Vespa. His Vespa was destroyed. He had to replace it. The complaint says Sansa hit another patrol car a block away, injuring an officer. Sideswiped another house. He made it to Columbus and Broadway, where he hit a civilian's car, injuring them. He left the car and ran into Chinatown, where officers finally arrested him. At first, prosecutors charged Sansa with several counts of assault upon a peace officer with a deadly weapon, hit and run, evading an officer with willful disregard, and a misdemeanor, possession of burglar tools. In a plea deal, all the charges got dismissed, except for a single count of evading an officer. I am. I told you. I told you. I knew that was going to happen. I knew it. Why didn't he resist arrest and pull weapons so they could just take him out? Because they probably wouldn't have shot him if, unless he would have fired his gun first. Look, what one thing's for sure, Ike, if it was a son, man, they would have... Yeah, they would have killed him. Yeah, they would have killed him. They would have they'd they'd hung him. They would have got found the highest tree they could find and just fucking... <laughs> the highest tree in the country. Yeah, they would have fucking hung his ass. Um, but yeah, this is, this is... This is what they do in these cities. This is why... 
Like a lot of people just don't understand. It's been like this for a long time. I know for this is why their crime rates Except are lower. That's not true. because they're not not because the crimes don't happen. It's because they plea them down and drop most of the charges. So, oh well, our crime rates are lower. Look at look look at what we we closed and look, you know. Mm, right. Yeah. So that case would be just a um, a, um a evading officer. <laughs> yo, yo, but I right, but let's be honest, right? If they were to punish what this guy is doing accordingly, he would be gone for a while. People will be safer for it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. He's a person. He would be safer for it because he's locked up in prison and not doing dangerous acts that might get him killed. Yeah, he, he's a person of color, though, so he's he's good. Man. He's very colorful. Misdemeanor, possession of burglar tools. In a plea deal, all the charges got dismissed, except for a single count of evading an officer. I am pissed. Pissed. There's no way a person doing all of that damage should be let off with just evading. Sansa got out with time served in that case, a little over six months in jail. The police union president tells me deals like the one Sansa got do little to prevent future crimes. Why is it that, you know, we continue to give, I guess, breaks and passes to people who just really are just showing they do not want to do the right thing. At that same yep. news conference announcing the bait car campaign, District Attorney Brooke Jenkins promised to prosecute car break-ins more aggressively. That's what we are trying to reinstill in San Francisco right now, is that not only will you be caught, but when you are prosecuted, there will be a consequence for that behavior. That's a start for Dan and Linda Oligas. Doesn't mean anything at all that the police were able to catch your guy with their bait car. It worked. I mean, their their law enforcement technique worked. It does, but then, you know, let's see what happens to this guy. Because, you know, it wasn't his first rodeo. You know it's a professional job. What are they going to do, slap him on the wrist and let him out in a couple months? Robert Sanzo's yes. public defender declined to discuss his current <laughs> yeah. case or the previous ones. His trial is set for November 17th, and I'll be there to follow up. Yo, yo, but I, let's be, I mean, one thing's for sure, right? This country is already struggling between the Sunland, Umbrito, and Gladder crime. If the Tigers start getting in the mix, stick a fork in it. I'm telling you, man. 